Yo, Plateheads, welcome to season two of Schwitzing with Norm. We have quite a mediocre show planned for you today. It is going to be a nice interview with uh, Red Sox legend Bill Lee, the spaceman. We have a couple weird lifts for you. It's an all plyo day on weird lifts, so we're going to be jumping for you. And we have a new segment called The Legends of George's Gym, which uh, we're right. awful excited about showing you. And um, for anyone that might be a new viewer, this is everybody's fourth favorite fitness show on cable TV. <laughs> and um, this one might not turn out so bad. We have uh, Trevor Green for our next Weird Lift demonstrator. He is a senior at New Bedford High. He has a 3.8 grade point average, is what he told me. And he plays everything, man. He's like the Bo Jackson New Bedford High. He goes football, volleyball, basketball. Other coaches have asked him to quit those sports to play their stuff. He's really, really gifted. All right, so what Trev's going to demonstrate is called underload jumping. Sometimes you've heard of, um, I don't know, we put someone in the pool to deload their body weight from a buoyancy standpoint. So this is sort of the same kind of idea. We use this a lot in rehab, but not only for rehab, just like being in the weight room, I think you'll agree with me on this one. Just like you, sometimes you got to lift light, sometimes you lift heavy, sometimes you lift medium. Same thing with jumping. Some jumps are going to be really high intensity. We might throw a weight vest on them. He usually takes about two weight vests, you know. But right now we're going to show you something that's a little bit uh, different and it's going to be uh, easier on his body. It's going to do two things. Um, so instead of me talking about it, like we'll just show, right? All right, so uh, we're rolling. So look, we have a couple different tubings over a rafter. Well, we can, you know, double up, triple up. We have different tensions. We're just going to grab a couple. And so he's going to just pull those two armpits. We're just going to demonstrate with some nice light ankle hops. These cords are serving two purposes. Number one, they're getting stretched, so they're helping pull him up. So he has to, you know, he handles sort of less than his normal body weight because they're assisting that. But also, these things are going to absorb some of the energy of him coming down. So it's not going to be as much impact on his body hitting the ground under normal circumstances. But you already learned that from your physics project that you were just telling me about. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's go some ankle hops. Just give me like, you know, maybe 85, 90, something like that. All right, let's go. So it's hard to tell because he's so gifted in general, but he's just like a jumping bean right now. And the cords are helping him in that. All right, heck to the yeah on that set. So we just showed you some ankle hops. Now we're just going to do something that looks a little bit more like a traditional ankle, I mean uh, squat jump. Okay, but the cords are helping him. Even though he's nasty, he's going to look slightly more nasty. Don't get a nosebleed, you know what I mean? <laughs> By that, I don't mean hitting your nose, I meant you're gonna be so high up, you're yeah, gonna get a nosebleed from altitude, that's right. Gotcha. Hey, don't burn up when you're re-entering the stratosphere. All right, I'll try. <laughs> nice. Hey, big thanks to Trevor for helping us out with our underload jumping. Uh, that's a hard one to set up in uh, some gyms, but figure it out because it's going to help out a lot. Um, also, go watch him play football. If you don't want to get cold, though, uh, you can wait for basketball season. If he gets a really big, uh, you know, breakaway, he might be able to uh, dunk. Is that true? Maybe. How, how much space do you need? Uh, about 10 feet. Behind me. I think that's realistic. Um, so, and then uh, he's going to be doing some volleyball as well. Anyway, um, I was wrong about the 3.8. I've come to learn that it's more of a 3.7 as far as the GPA goes, but he is wicked smart. So, um, girls that want to check him out, he's on, uh, what do you say, Christian Mingle? No. Well, whatever, just check him out on the dating sites <laughs> and, um, you know, take it from there.
On today's show, we're trying to get a little bit of a Red Sox nation behind us. So we're usually a hockey show, but today's guest is Red Sox legend Bill Spaceman Lee. He has a bat factory in Fall River, so we met him over there where he showed us a little bit about the operations. The guy was hilarious, and we thank him a great deal. So this guy was one of the best lefties that ever played at Fenway. For you youngsters that may have never heard of him, he was sort of doing it when Vasily Alexiev was clean and jerking and clean and pressing all that heavy weight and when England Dan and John Ford Coley were topping the charts. So, ladies and gentlemen, the next governor of Vermont, Bill Spaceman Lee. River for the first time ever, which we usually don't like doing, but anyway, we're at the bat factory of Red Sox legend, Bill Spaceman Lee, and so that's why we went up the highway. Norm, you're still kicking around. That's right. It was that's a close what, call though recently. Well, that's why I heard about that. I'm, my condolences. I hate close calls. <laughs> Tell us about your bat factory and your bats. Welcome to Axis. This is me and Louis Ledoux, my partner. He's right here from Fall River and we make the, the big knob bat. I called it the innuendo bat because every time you get jammed, it vibrates for over 20 minutes. You know, and it don't break, it was good. We started this, we have a lathe, we have our sanding equipment, we have everything, so it's a great little factory, you know, and I've been doing it for about five years here. I did it for 20 years up in Canada, so I've been making bats for 25 years. If this, if this interview goes well, will you pitch batting practice sometime in the next couple of years for the baseball team so they can improve their skills? You think they can't hit me? They can't, I know. I, it's funny, I try to throw the ball straight, but I have this amazing ability when the ball leaves my hand, it seems to disappear or go somewhere else. And it's, uh, I'm very lucky, you know, I still, at 61 I won a pro game, at 63 I played for the Brockton Rosk, at 65 I played for the San Rafael Pacifics in my hometown in California. Then I got traded to the Sonoma Stompers, and at 67, I ended up beating Pittsburgh. I like the name, the Sonoma Stompers. Isn't that a great team? All right, for the young viewers out there that don't know why you're the spaceman, can you just, I'm sure you've never been asked that before in an interview, but you want to talk about the awesome nickname? Well, I tell children when I interview them and they go, why are you the spaceman? I go, I'm not from this planet. I'm from Trafalmador. My spaceship broke down on the way to Earth. I end up hitching a ride here and I'm waiting for the technology of the planet Earth to get good enough to make the part to allow me to go home to my wife and family. I'm actually 2,333 years old. You yeah, don't look at it. I don't look at it. I age, you don't age as hard on planet Are you collecting Earth. specimens here to bring back to the planet no, while you're no. here, or you're just pitching? No, 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 no. no then no, when I, you were pitching on Mercury, did you find the really thin atmosphere affected your curve? It was hot there. I can't pitch it's if like it's It's like Boston over. in the summertime. Man. They say, how hard do you throw? I said, I, I throw in the 80s. If it gets any warmer than that, I don't pitch. This is where the bat is born. This yellow birch log that I cut, and I cut this one, and there's four bats in that. 
There's a one bat here, one bat. There's a bat dying to get out of this yellow birch. That's yellow birch. This is ash from the Unitarian Church in Bedford, Massachusetts. This tree was planted before Andrew Jackson was born. Old hickory. Old hickory. Isn't that great? Anyway, I make, I'm gonna make a bat out of that, a very long one, and we're gonna put it in the Unitarian Church because they lost their tree, but they're gonna get one bat out of that damn tree. Nice. Then, we have a machine that dowels it down into this. And you can see, this has heartwood in it. That's the bark. That is actually the bark of the outside of an ash tree. You know, and inside, that's the pearl line. Goes down, this is pretty good. And I can get a bat out of that. That's 91 ounces, so I can get a pretty good bat. When it gets up to 99, that's heavy stock. But I can get a bat out of that too. Want me to do a snatch with this? Or yeah, you can do a good form. Oh, that's that. good. It's great for your rotator. That's exactly that's right. Because I'm out here. I'm out here, and everything I do is I pull back this way. Because I pull this way, which allows me to throw forward, which is exactly what you've learned in weightlifting. That's why I'm very lucky like that. Now we come over to the, the lathe machine, and that'll take that and turn it into that. It'll spit it out on the floor, it'll spit it out and then we'll throw it in the sanding machine, which is over here, we'll lock her in. It'll go down, it'll get in here, it'll go around in a circle and the sandpaper here, we'll take it down fine and we'll use the hand sander to return it. Then we bring it over here. That's one end. Then we bring it over here and throw it in this. Bring her down. Turn her around. Turn around a little more. Gets out here and counterweight balances and stuff, takes a little of the weight out. You know. Then you get out there, you're ready to go. Not a bad bat. For extra money, could anyone get some corked bats over here or not really? No, we, uh, you gotta go to Portugal to get the cork. Talk about your injury with the Yankees, because that's another reason I hate them. You got into a huge uh, right melee. There. Got the zipper right there. And who, how do you get that ripped I out? Get, I get thrown to the floor by Nettles after the collision of Fisk and Pinella at home plate. Here comes the runner, here comes the throw, and let's see, he holds on to it. Does he hold on to it? And they have a fight. I got dumped up the line. I actually had a chromiocavicular separation, but through deterioration and, and more use, eventually my rotator cuff went and I had to have it repaired. So do you want us to get that Nettles guy for you or you're or you would be nice. Him? He doesn't, I've forgiven him because I saw him the other day and, and he was sitting in a chair and he looked like I could put him in the palm of my glove. He looked like a little teeny aberration of himself. And he's gotten smaller and I've gotten bigger. So. Right. There's no use fighting duvet covers. That's excellent advice for all of us. <laughs> Follow me and you take this and you'll be able to hit. Make it out to my uh, nephew. Yeah. What's Listen, his... I want to talk to you about my nephew because I need you to give Is talk he play? to him. Well, he's playing, but him and his buddies were playing home run derby recently. Yeah. And he got like someone hit a clapper right at him. He was on the mound with no like glove or anything, and he incurred his you know he got hit right in the sniffer. Oh really? A bit of a black eye. So that won't hurt. Zach, you, you don't play with your face, Tiger. Don't worry. See that? <laughs> Knocked out. See this? Knocked out. See in these sixties right here, all fake. It's all gold. So See? he's on the good pathway then. Yeah, you don't play with your face. 
Tiger, you don't play with your face. Don't worry about it. Got a little bit of a, a bend in it. No, it ain't bad. Yeah, I'd hit it on this side. I look at the way the grain curves, and you hit it on the convex side. So what's his name? His name's Zach. Zach. Congratulations on your first concussion. <laughs> Zach. <laughs> no. Zach, hit here. That's your best present. So like if, if, so next time that happens, like make a play on the ball or just duck for Zach? No, uh, pick up the ball, throw him out of first base, then go collect your teeth. In that order. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Spaceman, what's your opinion about local legend Brian Rose? I would say Brian was one of the greatest figure skaters ever to come out of this south part of Massachusetts. And he would have been a hockey player, but he just couldn't take the picks off his skates. And his pitching? <laughs> his pay, he was a much better pitcher. All right, so listen, do you still have great control? I have Pinpoint good accuracy? Yeah, yeah. Pinpoint, whatever you like. Can we do some tests? Yes. I want you to, I'm not going to have you knock an apple off my head, no, but we'll we're going to do, do something similar. Okay. All right, let's go. Whoa, through the five hole. <laughs> go get it. Boy, he runs well, doesn't he? I always, my dad said on my glove, it said, keep the ball down, keep the da ball down, be smooth, don't alibi, throw strikes, hustle, hustle, hustle. All right, this is Spaceman's uh, strike zone and the Lico plate. Ah! <laughs> if you get it through the hole. Get it through the hole? If you get it through the hole. That was yeah, high and inside. That's I got impressive. You. And he's standing at a regulation 90 feet, I think. <laughs> Three hundred and fifty years old, folks. That's good. I think you ought to just stop while you got the good stuff right now. Okay. I really. I mean, Fair that, enough. That was a good sound too, huh? Yeah, it was. That's good. All right. That's that was good. Stuff. Don't don't push your luck. Okay, another thing that we need to talk about is he is the future governor of Vermont. I think that's a safe assumption. It's uh, If this happens, which I probably would think it would happen, is there any way I can get an invite to the governor's mansion for dinner during your tenure? Yeah, I'm moving the mansion to my house in Craftsbury, and that door is always open because I have no locks on it. Okay, if you we won't find, give an address on that. If you can find Craftsbury, Vermont, if you find my house, you can have lunch. Well, how do we know that you're going to be there to make a sandwich for Call me? Call me on the long line. I only have one phone. Okay. That's right. All right, so I'm I don't even page. need you to win the, the election then. I'm just going to have lunch no. anyway. But it yeah. would be so cool once it became the official governor's mansion. It would be. I'm moving it from Montpelier, Montpelier, and I'm moving it to Craftsbury. So I'll be closer to the Expo Games in Montreal because I'm taking the line the dividing line of the border between Quebec and Vermont, and I'm erasing it. So all Vermonters have free access to Canada, and all Canadians have free access to Vermont. That'd be so much more convenient than what they do now. It is, it is. And if we can get rid of New Hampshire, then you can go straight to Maine. This is Mrs. Spaceman, and she is awesome but she never watches the show whenever she's running through New Bedford. Do you like the name of the show or not? Did you hear it? It's called Schwitzing with Norm. Schwitzing with Norm. Schwitzing with Norm. <laughs> oh good, did you record that? Yeah. I think that's a keeper. <laughs> well, oh good, that was a very nice sound. I would toast you. L'chaim to you, spaceman. L'chaim to the, to the San Jose Sharks. Really? Maybe sharks? they win their first Stanley Cup. Very nice. Look at this bad Larry. That is a Billy Bear. Good. You got it already? Billy Carter. Oh my God. I think I might have turned. I'm not sure that it's still great tasting. Oh, oh trust me, it's turned. <laughs> mm. Would you ever think you'd be having a drink with the spaceman? You know, well, I, I, I dreamed it. And you know, just like he told me, 
set the bar high, say your prayers, try to get on a high protein diet. And be in Fall River at noon. Be in Fall River. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't forsake me, oh my darling, on this our wedding day. You know what that's from? High noon. I was gonna say Star Wars. This is Louis Ledoux, the brains behind the Bat Factory. You're being way too kind. At, Thank uh, you. Artisan, craftsman. Oh, do you uh, want a Billy Beer from the 1970s to? Custom woodworking. Let's put it that okay. way. Okay. Custom bats. That's what we. That's and what's what your does. favorite wood to work with out of all woods? Uh, maple. Okay. Have you ever worked with zebra wood? No. No, it wouldn't be good for bats, but have you ever touched it? It's toxic, I I've think. I've seen zebra wood. Um, there's all kinds of wood. We're doing a training bat that Bill, uh, Bill helped design uh, and Chili Davis. It's, uh, it's made out of hickory. So we do all sorts of things. But listen, I don't want to hold up. Uh, all right, sorry. Well, we'll, uh, hey, we'll get, we'll get call right this guy here. if you want some bats. This right. guy can really, really. He can turn them out. <laughs> yeah, nice. Turn them out. Turn them around. <laughs> okay. This is Alyssa, and she's awesome, and she's an up-and-coming bat maker at Access Bats. Would you like to add anything to that? That's the mic. <laughs> you can say no. Most people don't like answering. No. Okay. <laughs> Shut the camera down. Do you think the interview's going well or not? Is what going well? The interview, this segment. Oh, this segment. Do you think this will be good once it's all done or not? It's going good. Do you regret having agreed to this? No, 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 no. It's no. fun, right? It'll be good. Isn't yeah. it better than having like one of those stiff Fox News people like ask you about? You oh, know, with the fake hair? Yeah. No, yeah. Like I this is just, one. we're just playing catch. And you have better stuff questions. Each other. Yes. You know? This is good. All right. Bye, y'all. Yeah, that's good, right? I'm taking off and going backwards like Michael Jackson into the sunset. That's a spaceman moonwalk. Moon. <laughs> Miss that pole. It seems like you don't really care about what you say anyway. Did you need us to have you sign off on? No. Like just put whatever. Hell we're, we're no. on. We're on. As Jack Lord said in Hawaii. Book them, Dano. Our guest demonstrator for the segment is Logan Haight. He is a volleyball player. He's a junior at New Bedford High. He's a great kid. He is also rumored to be the love child of Joakim Noah. And also, he shovels snow for extra money on the side if anybody needs that service provided this spring. Oftentimes in a weight room, we'll take an exercise and we might manipulate one phase of the exercise. So if we're benching, we might want to make it harder when you go down on that phase and make it a little easier coming up. So uh, that's not uncommon with a lot of different exercises. So we're going to apply that principle to a box jump. And so Logan's going to demonstrate. Here's our standard plain Jane everyday box jump. Good job. Now what we're going to do is... Grab those dumbbells. So you might see people jumping with a weight vest or using some dumbbells to overload. We're not exactly gonna do that. When we're jumping, we're really, really concerned with the uh, direction change. When he goes down, actually, I'll hold those and I won't spot you, so try not to be stupid. All right, so if you look at his uh, box jump, he's gonna like go down, change direction, come up. That wasn't the best uh, example of that. Try to be springy. Okay, so we're really going to really work that direction change here. So what I want to do is he's going to overload on the down phase. So having those dumbbells, it's going to make his muscles work a little harder to stop and then change direction. But he's going to bail with the dumbbells, making like the up phase the same as normal. So we're going to overload on the down phase. The up phase is going to feel a little bit easier because he's going to bail on those dumbbells. So. Don't break your ankles, and here we go. Good job. And actually, yep, just corral the dumbbells. And be careful if you do this one with not killing yourself if the dumbbell ends up in the wrong place. Good, give us one more. Good 
damage up. And there you have it. We want to take this opportunity to thank Logan Haight for helping us out with that last segment. We think he did a great job. When none of us are at our best, we're all getting over the flu. But, um, you know, I think hopefully we uh, got the job done. A lot of you have heard me talk about a place called George's Gym. This was just the best gym ever. This is where I learned how to lift weights. And I feel so fortunate to have, you know, trained with these guys and been around these guys and learned from them. I thought it'd be really cool to, you know, profile some of the guys that, you know, paved the way for today's scene. So we're doing a new segment called Legends of George's Gym. And uh, up first in this series, which is hopefully a series, we're going to introduce you to Armin Pee Wee Turgeon. Just show, just show the folks watching those forearms. <laughs> now remember folks, this is an 80 year old guy here. <laughs> Looks more like a 40 year old guy, tops. I just want everyone out there to know that we are privy to Armin Turgeon secret training routine. We're very privileged to be in here. Are those the place that were at George's? Yeah, that's my set. Yeah. My original York Olympic 400 pound set that I ran my first weight at the meet in 1955 at the New Bedford YMCA. And on that lifted the great and only John Davis, world and Olympic champion. This is how I believe the Olympic movement started in the greater New Bedford area. I introduced weightlifting to which uh, having a national, oh. world, and Olympic champion competing. In fact, I only had 400 pounds, and that's all he could try. And he did it, by the way. John, this is, is that the same bar? Yeah. John Davis clean and drink 400 on that bar? Yep. Wow. How much weight do you lift at 80 years old? Well, on a real heavy good day, I'd be going over 400 pounds. 403 actually is my limit poundage at the moment. But this routine that I do now is my mainstay of power. I, I rely on it completely. If I do nothing else during the week, I try to make sure I do this particular routine constantly. All it is is a stimulation to keep training and to keep trying because all of us, you reach a plateau, you get satisfied and that's it. I should be satisfied with what I'm doing. I really should be. Yeah. But I want more. I think more. it's better that you're not though. You I should want more. more. And, and the reason I want more is I want to prove to myself that I can be stronger at 80 than I was at 75 because of Diligent training. That's what I want to prove to myself. And right now, there's no question about it. I would say weightlifting has done a lot for me. It's kept me strong, kept me healthy. And at the moment, I take no known medication. And I'm very fortunate that I believe that weight training has really helped me to live longer. We want to thank the Spaceman for helping us out on today's show. Uh, as, a, as sort of a thank you, I know one of the charities that he's very involved with is the Travis Roy Foundation. That's also a charity that's you know near and dear to my heart. I remember Travis doing cleans at BU from the Wayback Machine. So we're going to post some information uh, on up there so you can check that out and help out a great cause. Uh, thank you to Trevor Green for Weird Lift Demo number one or two, whichever order it's in. Uh, thank you to Mr. Hates Kid for helping us out as well. 
And we hope that you like the Legends of Georgia segment because that's going to be a series and we're going to be bringing that all the time. And so I hope that that was a nice watch for you. And um, that should do it. Thank you.